Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we catch up with Rick Gale. Rick is a food and product photographer and he allowed us to come into his studio and watch as he shot some food photos and he walks us through all the equipment and how he does it. So here's Rick Gale. Well, thanks Rick so much for letting us uh, hang out in your studio. Um, first of all, let's talk about this studio. How long have you been here? I've been in this space for three years. Prior to that, I was in another studio for 22 years, and then we could keep going back in time. Back and back. And but you've been won't. shooting for 35 30, years? Yeah, like 35 years. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Um, and so what kind of work are you doing in, these days? So in a normal month or so, what kind of uh, photography are you doing in the studio? Well, I specialize in still life product and food photography. I love things that don't talk back. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been doing that my whole career, primarily. You know, some people work, but mostly People look at me and see what I do, and they hire me for still life, food, and product. That's funny. I usually tell people if it doesn't talk to me, I don't want to shoot it. And you're the opposite. I'm the opposite. Just... <laughs> we'll get along great. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Um, well, uh, and we're going to, in a minute, we have behind us, you've set up this nice still life setup. We're going to walk through sort of how you do the tools you use, all those kinds of things. But before we get there, um, I really was amazed at this studio that you have because, um, you know, our staff, we were looking around at the studio and saying, this is so much cleaner, more organized. It looks just so spectacular. Tell us a little bit about that because you were mentioning that uh, there's a reason for that. Well, as a still life shooter, um, you have so many small little tools and so many little gadgets and gadgets and props that if you're not organized and you want to look for that pair of tweezers or a little dental tool right. and it's not put in the right place, then you're pulling your hair out and you can't That's find something. I've done that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah I see. Okay. Exactly. So uh, what's the method to all this organization? Is it something that you just sort of fell into or is it something you've learned from somebody? Give us some tips for uh, non-organized people like myself. I, really, I'm not that organized of a person. I think what it helps is, is that you have good assistants that you work with that have seen wonderful systems at other studios. And I'm pretty open and free with my assistants. If they think something works better than what I'm doing, I'm all for it. So this kind of open shelving setup uh, was inspired by one of my assistants. And it works great because you can see everything. You don't have drawers. You don't have boxes or cubby holes you can simply find stuff and we just Look put it out in the open yeah that's awesome okay well we've got some uh product demo stuff that you're going to do for us so you're actually going to show you uh, show us how you do some still life photography you're going to talk about your gear and things like that so let's not waste any time let's dive right into that okay i'm ready Okay, Rick, well, here's the setup. So walk us through sort of how you have everything set. Looks like you're shooting some brownies, nuts, and some eggs, very delicious food. Yum, so yum. Um, walk us through what you're doing. Okay, well, first of all, I shoot with Canon's 1DS Mark III. Um, I'm using a pocket wizard. I'm tethered to my computer. Um, and Dynalite is my lighting equipment of choice. I used to use Norman quite a bit, and uh, I find these things amazing because they're so light to haul around. Uh, working with some grids, working with a, a medium soft box, a scrim. Uh, this is tough frost stretched onto a frame suspended by a C-stand. And I shoot tethered and my files open up in bridge so my client and I can just jump on over, take a look at it and make changes. And do you, are you using live view when you look? So is that instant or is it a delay in your No, your I don't camera? use live view because the challenge with that is I can't look through the camera. Right. Um, so that's basically my equipment and my setup. We are photographing some brownies, and for the purpose of this demo, I'm just recreating, recreating a shot that I did for a client of mine that uh, we work for. Um, it looks messy, but everything in here has a purpose. Um, for me, uh, lighting, still life, and food, you're obligated to try to tell a story. Not only are you selling a product, but you're obligated to tell a story, a mood, and that happens with lighting. Lighting is not only pouring light on something, but it's taking light off of stuff. Um, I have got a variety of cards in here. In the front, I have some silver cards, which are placed to kick in some ambient light from the strobes to highlight edges. This black card, I'm using that to take some light off of the eggs and the butter. Everything about food photography specifically is about texture, color, highlights and shadows. You really want to get that food just to look like it does in your mind's eye. Um, 
Very simple tools, A clamps from Home Depot to hold up my cards, lead weights wrapped in white tape to keep my uh, A clamps from shifting around. Um, one thing I think is kind of fun, I have a little container of crumbs that the food stylist made for me that I will place into the shot here. Everything has a purpose in a still life shot or a food shot. Everything is meticulously placed in there. Um, I've got a tray here where I keep a lot of my tools. Um, X-Acto knives, dental tools, dental mirror for putting in little highlights, brushes, tweezers. These are all tools that you need to create a shot that looks ultimately like you walked into someone's kitchen or into a bakery and you saw it set up like that. Awesome. Well, can you take a shot and show us the results really quickly? Yeah, I can do that. Um, every time I shoot, I'm usually making some kind of tweaks and changes. This is roughed in. So let me just go ahead and, and focus a bit, shoot one. The things that I look at are certainly composition, um, my depth of field. Um, currently, one of the styles that I really enjoy is using selective focus right. to bring foreground really tight and sharp and let the background fall off. I would probably adjust the, the walnuts down here, maybe roll the edge of this paper up a little bit more, certainly put in my... And spend some time getting yeah. it all locked yeah, in. Yeah, getting it all locked in, exactly. And let's talk about this tripod because it, it's uh, a nice base. So is this something that you would, uh, you know, have you started with the traditional tripod um, and then moved to this? Because obviously this has a lot finer control to right, it. Right, right. The beauty of a monopod, and certainly I come from the film years, right. where we would be shooting something like this on 8x10 film. Right. So, the 8x10 camera makes sense on here, You're right. but a little 35 doesn't, but the beauty of this is that I can raise and lower the camera instead of tripod legs. Mm -hmm. This is on wheels that are lockable so I can move the camera anywhere I want. With a tripod, right. I'd be going crazy. This is a good so head it looks like, it's uh -huh. a ball head. And then you're using a 24 to 105 macro right. lens, right. which is really, really nice. Exactly. Well, let's talk one more thing before we go. Um, food styling. So we know you have a food stylist that comes in and does a lot of things and you have a table set up. So let's look at that really quickly before okay. we Okay, that's sure. Okay, well now we're here and we're with Kim. Say your last name because I know what it is. It's Kracha. Kracha. I've tried it and I messed it up so many times. So thank you, Kim, for joining us. And you are a food stylist. Correct. All right, now we have a bunch of little tools here. Actually, some are big, some are small. You've got your Pam, you've got dust off. So walk us through some of these, because this one right here, actually, uh, this is yeah, a hurts. dental. Dental tools, which what? I rely on heavily. And tell us um, about the dental tool. Walk well, us through for it. For someone like Fairy Tale Brownies, which is one of our accounts, mm -hmm. Um, because they are manufactured, they'd like them to look like they're hand cut. So I usually just go in and I rough up the sides and make them look a little more natural, maybe pull some chocolate chips out or whatever it takes. And this is like the perfect tool, who, who knew, to dentistry, do to do some of the uh, finessing on and some WD of the WD-40, what's that about? Um, that I use, not all stylists use that. I like the way that the oil applies itself. It doesn't separate or beat up and, and it, seems as food sometimes has condensation it just keeps a really even layer of sheen so what kind of food would you spray that on i mean granola bars uh, or eggs no, or uh, <laughs> any kind of like protein um i do it on some baked goods uh bacon uh bacon has usually got enough grease got nice on its own on it. that we don't have to <laughs> <laughs> enhance that in any way, shape, or form. You can and tell I know nothing about food. <laughs> this kind of so stuff awesome. really helps in what we were talking about earlier about texture and color helps mm -hmm. really describe the food and give it an appetite appeal. So this helps in generating highlights. I was just going to say ah, that. So specular highlights come from those types of things? Yes. What about these these three bottles here? I can't really say. Um, we have glycerin in one. We have um, water in one. And then we have freshenol, which is just a food stabilizer it helps with things like lettuce not wilting on set oh gotcha um and a lot of that has to do with just there's no exact science to it depending on how warm a room might be um what the photographer's right. needs are um to just kind of mix and match and make some of this stuff work now the glycerin water uh typically if we're shooting a drink right. a cold drink uh, depending upon what we want the condensation to look like, we might spray the glass with uh, Scotchgard. 
and then hit the glass with a combination of water and glycerin, the Scotch Guard helps the water beat up so it stays there for a while, and then you've got this drink that looks really refreshing with the water on it. So, um Help me out here because I have not done food photography, but it sounds to me like a couple of things. First of all, you went to school to learn how to do this, correct? Um, actually, my background is in art direction, mm -hmm. and then I went to culinary school and kind of blended the two talents, the science this... behind food and the art direction background. So it's not something you wake up one day and go, I'm just going to walk out and become a food stylist. You have to, head to, to do some things to get there. Um, and then the second thing, so when I'm working uh, shooting beauty or fashion, I wouldn't dream of doing that without a professional makeup artist, hairstylist, uh, wardrobe stylist, you know, a team of people that can come in and, and do that for me. Is that the same thing with food? You're not going to just walk in and shoot with that Kim or somebody? Oh, definitely, because first, just in terms of how to make something look good for the camera, that's what it's really all about. You wouldn't be served something that looked like what we did. And in essence, you know, we're, we're like little liars. Right. But people need to see that food photographed as they see it in their mind's eye. Otherwise, they will not really want to order it or buy it or whatever. It's like a secret of portrait photography. Don't make me look the way I am. Make me look better than I am. <laughs> exactly. So, right. you know, Kim is the food stylist of choice. When she's available, we work with her. And then if you really want to get specific in larger markets where they have products uh, lots of dairy products or ice creams or chocolates. There are stylists that specialize in just ice cream, just chocolate. Wow. Um, and it's incredible some of the stuff they come up with to solve challenges uh, to make something look the way we want to see it in your mind's eye. And all of these bowls and mixing bowls, this is not for baking, it's for no, styling? it's uh, propping. Uh, Rick was oh, trying gotcha. to execute a, you know, like kitchen idea with this fairy tale brownie shoot, and so it's just you know tools of the trade if you were in your own home kitchen. And clients like to see uh, a variety of styles. If they want three or four bowls in a shot, you want to present them choices. Because lo and behold, if you don't show one thing, it'll be the one thing they're asking for. Right. So you run out and have to you know shop it and get it again. Gotcha. Okay, well, thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, we, we could go on for hours, I think, with all this stuff because, I mean, look at these gadgets that they have here. That's a whisker. Um, <laughs> That's what she hits me with. <laughs> yeah, get Sorry. it done, get it done. Uh, but we're out of time. But thank you so much, uh, Tim Ricks, for joining us. And uh, we have so much to go through. But. Um, uh, that's all we have time for. Um, and you know, we're going to do a behind the scenes bonus feature actually because there was so much that we wanted to show you today. We didn't have time for that. So tune in to Adorama TV's uh, channel so you can see some more of Kim and some of the stuff that's going on. And again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Well, that was Rick Gale. That was a lot of fun. I certainly learned a lot. I hope you did too. Remember, you can see a list of all of Rick's equipment and even more articles on product and food photography at the Adorama Learning Center. And remember, if you like what you see, we have shows every single week, so please subscribe. Well, I'm Mark Wallace. Thanks for joining us, and I will see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.